National Nutrition Interviews, the natural health experts, up close and personal. Meet nutrition rock star Sam Greasy, the author of the best-selling Power of Superfoods and formulator of Genuine Health Greens Plus. Also known as the guru of greens, Sam is a passionate health educator, public lecturer, and frequent TV guest. He's motivated thousands to live healthier and happier lives through his outstanding commitment to natural health. He's also a National Nutrition Seminar Speaker. Hi, my name's Sam Gracie. I'm a Canadian nutritional and lifestyle researcher. I am the formulator and developer of the award-winning food powder Greens Plus. My early life, it was very interesting. I graduated from university and I was hired by the, the Niagara South Board of Education in Niagara Falls as a guidance counselor. I was the very first person, head of guidance, I was the very first person directly out of university to take over a major guidance department. I eventually coordinated services with three different school boards, uh, public and Catholic school boards. What I really specialized is working with teens at high risk, 14 and 15 year olds who were severely addicted to drugs or alcohol. And I discovered that uh, their negative attitude, their criminal activity, their abuse of drugs and alcohol came from the fact that they had absolutely zero nutrition in their body. Uh, for breakfast, they might have a bottle of pop. For lunch, they might have french fries and gravy. And for supper, they might have a macaroni and cheese out of a box maximum. No fruits, no vegetables, no colors, no salads, no herbs, no spices. What I like about being a nutritional researcher is that we're advancing the concept of wellness. So every day our research is unfolding who we are, where we're coming from, and where we can go to. For instance, it's no longer a secret that we can keep our brain intact pretty well till the day we take our last breath. That's great news. We don't have to fall victim to mental dementia, to Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. We actually can be in a defensive position if we know the rules of the road and we can really take care of our brain with nutrients, with exercise. It can stay functional far longer than we ever thought. Also our immune system to ward off diseases, even simple things like colds and flus. We can really eliminate the vast majority of them. Energy, we can increase it without needing all the extra caffeine from coffee. Enjoy your coffee if you'd like black or an espresso because it's alkalizing. We can talk about that a little later. So we can increase our energy, we can increase our sleep. Sleep's a big question today, whether we're sleeping naturally or not. It's an indicator if our hormones are balanced or so. And our sense of feeling well all day long, the sense beyond energy, but the sense of really feeling well, that is what I'm able to be involved in research, what we can pass on to people that you can incorporate in your life right today, right now. Seminar that I, I'm giving at National Nutrition in or really Ontario, I think is really stimulating. It's September. So what do we do in the fall? What foods do we eat? How do we restore, renew, revitalize? How do we get ready for the winter? What are the foods of choice? What time of day do we eat the foods? And if we eat a meal and three or four hours after eating that meal, we're hungry or we're a con little cantankerous or we're tired or we lose some self-esteem or we lose our concentration, it tells us, or our mood declines, it tells us that our last meal was not hormonally balanced. We talked about balancing carbohydrates to protein at each and every meal, but also we need to be eating every three or four hours to maintain our home hormonal balance. So I'm gonna show what you eat, when you eat to raise testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, dopamine, our get up and go hormone, melatonin for deep sleep, serotonin for mood modulation. So we can really affect the internal chemistry of our body by what we eat and that's critically important for our wellness. That's what we'll be talking about tonight. Well, the main thing in people's diets is the lack of understanding that, first of all, at each meal, whether you are a male or female, it's important to look at your protein content. A protein makes a hormone called glucagon and glucagon balances insulin. Insulin comes from eating carbohydrates, grains, sugars, vegetables, and fruit. So when glucagon and insulin are balanced, we're hormonally balanced. 
We're firing on all eight cylinders. We have dynamic energy, we have motivation, creativity, enthusiasm. We're at the top of our game. So women must have 20 grams of protein at three meals a day, and men a minimum of 30 grams of protein at three meals a day. And we have to eat our protein first. As soon as we eat our protein, and it sends a message to produce glucagon, glucagon basically says we're full, we don't need to overeat. Then we add our salads and we add our vegetables. Most people don't eat a wide range of colors. We have to not just eat those three or four vegetables that we think are our favorites. We have to go out of our way to try different kind of ethnic vegetables and especially seasonal vegetables, locally grown and by color. So the deficiency most of us face, lack of color. Our plate should be a rainbow of colors at every meal. We should use a food grater and take beets and carrots and yams and just grade them over the top of our entree just to give some color and then take some herbs. It might be mint, it might be parsley, it might be oregano and just put some sprigs around our plate to add some liveliness and some color. So we are missing the liveliness and the color, almost everybody. I feel that uh, we're very lucky, first of all, to have life. We're very lucky to um, be able to be here. And I've always liked the Boy Scouts or Girl Guides motto, leave it better when you leave than when you found it. So every day, every person that we're involved with, leave them better when we leave them than when we met them. Everywhere we go, every store we walk into, every street we walk down, when we're working on our job, people we meet, clean up things along the sidewalk as you walk along, why not? Why not make every day such a positive statement that you make your life happy and other people's lives happier? I think it's just the very basics to be happy, make other people happy, and I think then everything works much better for everyone. I do a number of things. I ensure that I get eight hours of deep, deep sleep in a dark environment. I eat three meals and two snacks a day to keep my hormones balanced with that protein to carbohydrate ratio, always conscious of it. I eat a huge variety of colors, which actually gives your skin an enormous amount of color if you're really conscious of some of the colors, the oranges and the reds and the greens and the yellows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I am a proponent of getting some sun every day, 10 or 15 minutes, never burning, building it up over a period of years, not trying to get some sun. Sun is a photo nutrient. We sometimes treat the sun as if it should be foreign because that's if we go out and get burned. But every day a little exposure makes our vitamin D3 and lifts up our mood. I also like to exercise each day, whether it's walking, whether it's running, whether it's bicycling, whether it's swimming, to ensure that the body was meant for quadrilateral movement. Two arms, two legs. Every organ in our body, take for instance our stomach, or our heart, or our liver, or our brain, or our eyes, our vision, or our hearing. We actually have motor nerves that run from our arms and our legs to each of those organs. So when we move, and we're meant to move, a body in motion tends to stay in motion, a body stationary tends to stay stationary. When we move, and our arms and legs are in some form of movement, we're sending motor messages to these different internal glands. It massages them, it brings nutrients and blood into them, and it takes waste products out. It doesn't happen if we're just sitting watching television or we're sitting playing on our computer. It just doesn't happen. Matter of fact, if you sit for more than six hours a day, your incidence of cancer, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes explode, just increase dramatically, just by sitting, because we weren't meant to sit still. And the last thing that I like to do is drink a lot of water. This is a, a huge question. Um, I'd like to go to, to a study that was done at the University of Kansas, which I put in detail in a book that I wrote, um, The Path to Phenomenal Health. The um, researchers asked the Franciscan nuns if they would give them 20 senior nuns who had prayed for 20 years or more, and who some of the senior nuns felt were able to reach a level of deep prayer. Then they asked the Dalai Lama from Buddhism if he would supply 20 monks who would uh, consider to be very deep meditators. In both cases, the nuns who were praying or the monks who were meditating, both uh, had been doing so for 40 years. So they were 
veterans of it, let's say. What the researchers would do is have the monks meditate and the nuns pray. They would hook up probably 150 little receptors on the top of their head that would pick up every brain wave. What they would ask the monks or the nuns at the end is, did you go deep in your prayer? Did you go deep in your meditation? And what they found was that they could find, when the monks or nuns said they went deep, they found an actual site in the brain that lit up. So they came to the conclusion that we're, first of all, hardwired for spiritual realization, to understand, to know. You might use the word God, you might use the word Jesus, but it's a sense of knowing and understanding not just a philosophical understanding, but a really hardwired understanding. The conclusion of the research was that the nuns who prayed to the monks that meditated, even though they used different languages, it was the same site that lit up. So the first conclusion is, it doesn't matter what your approach is, you must do it every day. If you do it every day, it could be pondering, it could be sitting looking at the stars or the sky, it could be holding your baby, it could be holding your grandmother and grandfather and rocking in their senior years. When we do something that is sensitive, that is tender, and we stay in it for a while, the sight lights up in our brain. And the more it lights up, the more the nerve passages or highways become attached to it, the easier it is to gain that sight. So that sight would be a sight of, uh, let's say, realization. And that really is significant for everyone. It's not that some people should. Every brain is hardwired for a spiritual experience. And if we don't use it, we just becomes dormant. And if we use it and it gets lit up, it's something that just responds constantly to us. Therefore, we're morally, let's say, more responsible to ourselves. We live a life in which we're more responsible to other people. And it is the same site, whatever the approach. So when we say spirituality, each individual has to decide for themselves what is spirituality. But here's one point that's true for all of us. Prayer, meditation are no longer options. They're mandatory because they lower cortisol, our stress hormone. The one hormone we all have elevated is cortisol. Cortisol is very acidifying. It stresses us. It robs us of our energy. It robs us of our motivation, creativity, good mood, enthusiasm. When we keep cortisol levels down, we're a dynamo. When they're up, we're stressed. We're under pressure. We forget where things are. We make a lot of errors. So meditation, prayer, pondering, um, quiet time to ourself, they all lower cortisol. When cortisol is lower, our main hormone called DHEA goes up. All our other hormones, you might recognize them as testosterone in men or estrogen and progesterone in women are created at a higher level. Therefore, it keeps us younger, more functional than we ever thought possible. So no longer are they optional. When I was working with teens at high risk, these teens, and many teens, matter of fact, will not eat fruit in front of their peers. They won't eat vegetables or salads. They just don't consider it to be really cool, let's say. So we studied and we looked at the um, composition of the diet of teens who had learning disabilities, teens who had a chip in their shoulder, teens who had lost their self-esteem, teens who were depressed, teens who were involved in criminal activity or abuse, abuse using uh, alcohol or drugs or some other substance like that. And what we discovered was that they had a lot of nutrients that were missing in the brain that would allow for transmission of impulses in real time over secure lines. So a lot of messages were garbled, which meant they were antisocial, they didn't know how to communicate properly, they didn't understand the language, the rules or the regulations, so they appeared to violate them. But the truth is, they're nutrient deficient. So when working with these teens, I began to work with um, different psychiatrists from different universities across Canada, looking at what is the exact composition that would work best for the brain. So uh, Dr. Hoffer, who was at the University of Saskatchewan at the time when I first began, was uh, really concerned with the number of drugs he was given to people who were just simply depressed. And he was wondering if there was a nutrient deficiency. At the same time, I was discovering that. He was discovering a nutrient deficiency in most of what we had called depressions or uh, loss of self-esteem or moodiness or bluesiness or whatever uh, extension of that that we might feel. So it wouldn't be so much that it was a psychiatric order that required medication. It was really trying to get food into the system and get the nutrients into the brain or into the nervous system so that they could really operate at optimum. 
So I uh, was looking at how could we possibly get salads and fruits and vegetables into these teens at high risk, or matter of fact, into many adults who themselves don't eat fruits and vegetables or salad each day. So I developed Greens Plus, working with many other researchers. Uh, Dr. Linus Pauling contributed to that. Dr. Hoffer contributed to that. And we looked at uh, growing 23 organic products around the world, drying them and putting them together, putting them together to get a huge nutrient program profile, getting all the phytonutrients, antioxidants, alkalinity, the equivalent of one tablespoon of Greens Plus, which costs between a dollar and a dollar fifty, you get the equivalent of six large organic salads or six large servings of vegetables. When you think of the time it takes to purchase them, to clean them, to prepare them, and to eat them, and for a dollar, especially in the winter, that you can get that same amount of nutrients for one tablespoon of Greens Plus, that was the incentive to start this. So I would put it in smoothies so these teens wouldn't even know they're getting the equivalent of all their fruits and vegetables in one tablespoon of Greens Plus. Why are greens so important? Well, you'd have to look at the research on Greens Plus to understand why they're so important. First of all, let's look what nature does, the environment that we live in. The sun is 93 million miles away from Earth, the right distance to heat up the Earth so microbes will grow, so plants can grow, so we can have food. Once those plants start to grow and the sunshine hits a plant, the plant produces green chlorophyll. That's why the original stage of everything is green. When a plant produces chlorophyll, matter of fact, when we eat chlorophyll, it's antiseptic. It's antiviral, it's antifungal, it's antibacterial. So we want to eat green as much as possible in our diet for that reason, first of all. Second of all, when a plant produces chlorophyll, which you see in the leaves when you look through a forest or you look at your lawn, that green magic happens. When the sun hits it, photosynthesis begins. Photosynthesis means that that plant takes in our carbon dioxide. Right now, what are we doing? We're breathing. When we inhale, we're taking in oxygen. When we exhale, we're giving off very dangerous carbon dioxide, which would kill all of us, except nature jumps in. When photosynthesis happens and the green in the plant hits that sun and that chlorophyll is made in photosynthesis, it takes in our carbon dioxide as its main source of carbon, as its food source. We would not have a strawberry, a blueberry, a lettuce, a lemon, an apple, a pear, parsley, without carbon from our exhaling. We're the base to all of that, but what does the plant do in return? In that process of taking our carbon to build the vegetables, the herbs, the salads, the fruit, the berries, it gives off a waste product called oxygen. And that's what keeps us alive. We need oxygen. We can't live without oxygen. It's the number one nutrient that we need. We take 17,000 breaths a day, we need to start to be more conscious of them. Breathe in deeply and exhale deeply. Oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. So green is critically important and greens are critically important because it's the base of life. I've been asked, is there proof that Greens Plus doesn't make a difference in people's health? There's several studies that are really important. I'd like to start with Dr. Heather Boone from the School of Pharmacy, University of Toronto. Dr. Heather Boone was wondering whether I and my research was authentic and whether Greens Plus was authentic. We are saying that Greens Plus increases energy, that when you take Greens Plus, it makes the body alkaline so that you not only produce more energy, but your immune system is more capable of warding off colds and flus. We also said that when you take your Greens Plus, that you feel better. There's a strong correlation between taking Greens Plus and feeling mentally and emotionally balance. So there's some kind of hormonal connection. So Dr. Heather Boone <clears throat> took Greens Plus. She did it in a double blind placebo crossover study, the gold standard of any type of research such as pharmaceutical research on any drugs that we know of. It's the highest standard, seldom used with nutrients. She took that standard and applied it to Greens Plus. She took 100 women in the Toronto area. Half of them were getting Greens Plus, half were getting a placebo made from rice powder that with green natural food dye that was made to look like and smell like Greens Plus. The people that were both given it <clears throat> to the 100 women and the 100 women that were taking the product had no idea if they were getting Greens Plus or not. They monitored them over a period of six months. The conclusion, which was printed, the study is also available from GenuineHealth.com, is that in all cases, energy, vitality, and wellness increased dramatically. The incidence of colds and flus diminished and there was a strong movement towards emotional 
psychological and mental well-being. Well, we were able to put that on our bottle. In a sense, it was the first real clinical proof that Greens Plus really worked. Now the schools of pharmacy teach pharmacists that are coming through that one of the few nutritional products that really have proven true is Greens Plus. So pharmacists are very strong on promoting Greens Plus, but I'd like to go on a little more. Dr. Venkat Rao, PhD, University of Toronto Faculty of Medicine, Professor Emeritus, 30 years at the University of Toronto Faculty of Medicine, wanted to see if Greens Plus not only would be absorbed, but would it actually get into the cells of the body? This is the standard. It is no longer what we eat. It's no longer what we digest. And it's no longer what we even absorb. When you take a supplement, when you eat a food, do the nutrients get into the billions of little cells in our body where they're needed to function, to do some job, to uplift, to support our life force? What Dr. Venkat Rao found were the phytonutrients that ward off disease, the antioxidants that protect cells from aging, protect them from wearing out, that the vitamins, that the minerals actually not only got into all the cells of the body at an accelerated rate, to use his words, at an accelerated rate, but they also got into the liver at huge amounts that caused the liver to make two ingredients that we'd like to take supplements for, and they're so important, but you can't absorb them. Superoxide dismutase and glutathione. These are unusual names, but these are huge, huge molecular, what would I say, uh, dump trucks. They take waste products out of the body. It is as important to eat good nutrients, to bring them into the body. Then, as they break down, we have to get the waste products out of the body. It's a continual turnover. The more efficient that turnover, the better we are. So Greens Plus was shown not only to get an enormous amount of nutrients into the cells of the body, clinical proof from the University of Toronto, more than any other green drink they've ever looked at or supplement, but more importantly, the amount of glutathione and superoxide dismutase that were formed, um, especially glutathione, that was the main marker, were capable of taking a lot of waste products out of the body. The last one I'd like to mention about Greens Plus was the University of Eastern Michigan. The University of Eastern, Eastern Michigan took some of its prime athletes between the age of 19 to 22, perhaps, in that age group. They had them sit on a stationary bicycle, bicycle and exercise until total exhaustion. When they were given Greens Plus, they could work out much longer until total exhaustion than when they were not given Greens Plus, when they were given a placebo. Their diets were kept constant, their nutrients were kept constant, their supplements were kept constant. It was just the addition of Greens Plus. These are already prime efficient athletes, but they were able to extend the rate at which they could work at their optimum longer. So then the researchers felt that the antioxidants and phytonutrients, the vitamins and minerals of Greens Plus were getting into the mitochondria. Those are the little cells that produce our energy. There are hundreds of them in every cell of the body. They're organelles. They make energy called ATP. You may, might have heard that name, adenosine triphosphate. What they found was Greens Plus not, did not just get into the cell, they got into the mitochondria. Very difficult to get something in the mitochondria. And where our energy is produced caused that mitochondria to produce more energy by protecting it from wear and tear so it can produce more energy before it became exhausted and needed to be recharged with new nutrients. Green Plus Oil is an interesting product. There are people today who have allergies, allergies to wheat, allergies to dairy, that want to ensure that it, what they're taking is completely allergen free. And we put in the same category, vegan. So Greens Plus Oil came out for those who are strict vegetarian or vegan or those who would like the option of having that type of product with zero allergies in it. So the soy lecithin from the Greens Plus, we can, uh, converted it and we now use sunflower lecithin. We took the probiotics out, no dairy whatsoever. It is an efficacious product that works as well as Greens Plus, but zero allergens in it and it's 75% organic. Proteins Plus is a unique protein powder. It's a whey isolate. It begins from dairy, a dairy that, uh, which the cows have uh, no synthetic hormones, no growth hormones added to it. Natural feed is given to them. And what happens with this protein is it's absorbed at such a quick rate. We like to put it in a protein smoothie, but there's one trick. <clears throat> when you put in your 
water or your milk or your rice milk or your hemp milk or your almond milk, unsweetened, whichever that medium is, and you put yogurt or you put non-dairy soy yogurt in it, and you put berries and flax seeds and sesame seeds and chia seeds for fiber, you want to add your protein and some fat. So you might use some olive oil or you might use some hemp oil in there or CLA oil. Uh, some form of fat is necessary. But this protein powder can be broken down in the blender. So it's important to make your smoothie and the protein powder add in the last 10 seconds. So Proteins Plus is the highest efficacy of absorption rate, 99% absorbed, uh, has all the amino acid profile so that when we're training, when we're working out, or if we're using it for a meal replacement, we're sure to get huge quantities of protein that you might have to eat a chicken breast or might eat a large piece of salmon for that you have to digest. And there's no guarantee after the age of 34 that our digestion is optimum. So Proteins Plus is literally pre-digested, it's easily absorbed, and ensures that you get an enormous amount of protein quickly into the cells and muscle tissues of your body. General Health has brought a, a very unique uh, protein powder. It's a fermented vegan protein powder. Vegan ensures that it's from non-animal sources. It's from beans and peas and um, seeds. It's natural, it's easy to digest, it has a complete profile, all the amino acids that you require in a protein to be absorbed to build muscle tissue as we would with animal protein. But it's fermented. What does fermentation mean? When you uh, eat kimchi, when you eat sauerkraut, when you eat uh, tempeh, when you eat, when you drink a coffee, when you drink a tea, when you drink a beer, when you drink dry red wine, um, all of these foods are fermented and the fermentation when it goes into our stomach means breakdown process. Fermentation is a process in which we break down the chicken breast we ate or the tempeh we ate or the vegetable we ate or the fruit we ate that it, or the berry. It breaks it down in fermentation so when we eat fermented foods it causes our stomach to ferment even more, become more of an efficient fermenter or digester might be another word that you might associate with the stomach to be a high efficient digester so we get all the nutrients out. So when we ferment the vegan protein powder, it means that it's not only absorbed efficiently, quickly, but it causes any other food taken with it to ferment and be broken down and be digested and its nutrients get into the system quickly and easily. Well, the supplements that everybody should include would be uh, good quality water. Think of it for a moment. Just we are a water medium. Deep breath by bringing in oxygen. Those are actually supplements. Some sunshine. It is an actual supplement. Now, when we look at supplements in general, as the question might refer, we're looking at a good quality multivitamin mineral. You may say, well, I eat my fruits and my vegetables and my salads. But the quality of where they were growing, when they were growing, how long they were stored, and their vitamin and mineral capacity is always questionable. And it changes. If I test one lettuce in one province of Canada and the next day in another province and test the equal lettuce, they can be miles apart in the nutrient content. It depends on the soil and how this, what was put in the soil, what fertilizers were used, etc. So we can't really rely on our natural food source. So a good multivitamin mineral each and every day. I'm a big proponent of a green food. A green food is a food, dehydrate, good quality foods that give you a wide range of phytonutrients, antioxidants, so Greens Plus for instance. Well, I think along with Greens Plus, you always want a protein source. You have to think of protein as structural. When we think of our skin or our brain, we think of our hair, when we think of our body, really a structural component is protein. Surprisingly, women, you do not get enough protein. When women do not get enough protein, they eat carbohydrates in its place. When women eat carbohydrates in place of protein, they put weight on. Most of our weight problems come from not enough protein. Protein, we mentioned earlier, makes a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon puts the brakes on. It's the only, only ingredient, nutrient that we can take that puts the brakes on hunger. It's protein, so you eat your protein first at every meal. So Genuine Health makes Proteins Plus, which eventually comes from dairy, but now they have a fermented vegan protein powder for those who do not want an animal source. But Dr. John Perardi, very progressive researcher, who's worked at many Canadian and American universities and works with the Canadian Olympic team, the winter team, and many professional athletes, feels that we should alter our protein intake if we're using a powder. For instance, Proteins Plus, 
comes from high quality dairy, it really has no dairy in it, but its source is from dairy, that perhaps we use that every day for a month. <clears throat> then we might use the fermented vegan protein powder for a week or vice versa, use the vegan protein powder for a month and then switch, that we should rotate our protein so our body never gets used to one source of protein. With that though, I'd also recommend a fish oil. The fish oils are the DHA and EPA. These are special fats that we need to keep our brain fluid, elastic, so that messages can travel through easily so we retain our memory. We have instant recall, good mood and good enthusiasm. So one of the Greens Plus products, a good quality protein product and a fish oil. Those are mandatory. Genuine Health is a company in Canada started by Stuart Brown. It's based in uh, both Toronto and Vancouver. And it's a company really dedicated to formulating some of the most advanced products, food products, but products that have been through extensive university testing, high quality university testing, to ensure not only that the product itself is efficacious, but it actually completes what you buy it for, that you're guaranteed that it will work. So it is one of the many companies that do a good job in Canada, but it is at the forefront of a company that does research to ensure you, the purchaser, that the products are of the highest quality. And Stuart Brown is the CEO and a personal friend of mine and a person of high ethics and morals. So I have high regard for Genuine Health, which we call GH. I chose Genuine Health specifically because of Stuart Brown. Uh, he's considered you know, to be such an exceptional person in terms of, he started in the, in the nutritional industry with health food stores in the Toronto area. He eventually became a manufacturer called GH or Genuine Health. And I chose him because of his moral ethics, his honesty, his integrity, and his willingness to take Greens Plus, the product I had developed, and continue in university medical schools to have it tested for a number of reasons and to ensure that uh, Greens Plus or Greens Plus Extra Energy or Greens Plus O, which is the vegan form of Greens Plus for those who want um, absolutely no animal products, 75% organic, that the whole line of Greens Plus products be of the highest quality, number one in their manufacture, number two, have high quality research to back them. That's why I chose Stuart Brown, very progressive person with very progressive products. Bone Building Solution is a very interesting book and I think it's a must read. We think of women in osteoporosis, but men, by the age of 24, men and women are all, all under some form of net bone loss. When you look at young men uh, rounded at the shoulder and head leaning forward when they walk, some of the structure in the neck is lost and already we are losing some bone. So first of all, let's not think of bone loss as being something attributed to aging women. It belongs in the same reference for men and for women. We have to be conscious of it. And we looked at new approaches to, to bone. What we discovered, quite remarkable. Number one, the bones in our body can be kept strong for the rest of our life. If they are, it means that in our 80s and 90s, we are mobile and independent. What happens to most of us in our 80s and 90s? We lose our bone strength. We lose our ability to move freely. And we start to shuffle. We trip and fall and break a home and we end up bone, excuse me, or a hip and we end up in a nursing home. If we can stay mobile and independent in our 80s and 90s with strong bones, we'll be much better off for it. There are several things that we found out that we can do. Number one, the biggest mistake that any of us can do was pointed out by Dr. Walter Willett. He is head of nutrition at Harvard University School of Medicine. What Walter Willett called, we finished some research on our group. He called a situation the calcium paradox in which people who take the most calcium supplements, I want to repeat it, people who take the most calcium supplements end up with the worst osteoporosis, the worst osteopenia, the stage of just beginning it, the worst net bone loss. Now that confused everybody because we assume that if you take calcium to build bones, the more you take, the stronger your bones, but it's not true. So in the Bone Building Solution, the book that we wrote that's written on recycled paper, biodegradable soy-based ink, where the Brownies of Rural Guides plant one tree for every 100 books that sell, and 100% of all profits goes to nonprofit environmental groups across Canada. We take nothing from it. Work was done at the University of Toronto Faculty of Medicine by Dr. Leticia Rao and a large number of PhDs there. We discovered several things. You cannot take more than 500 milligrams of elemental calcium at one time in a supplement. 
Now, if you need 1,000 milligrams, it has to be perhaps six hours apart. So you could take 500 in a supplement in the morning and 500 at night. Soon as you go over 500, many supplements are 1,000 milligrams, 1,500 milligrams of elemental, the amount you absorb, calcium, 2,000 milligrams. What we discovered and has been shown true by other researchers now is whenever you take more than 500 milligrams, the amount of calcium over 500 enters into your bone building cells, your osteoblasts. And it's like putting your foot down on the pedal of the gas of your car. The more you press down, the more gas, the faster your car is gonna go. But if you're trying to maneuver through the streets of Toronto and you're going as fast as you can, it's gonna cause a lot of mayhem and you're gonna endanger other people's lives. When you take more than 500 milligrams of calcium and it enters in the bone building cells called the osteoblast in your teeth, in your nails, in your face, your skull, your shoulders, your knees, your elbows, your shins, wherever it may be that you're experiencing some problems perhaps, is that it causes the bone building cells to rev up and they die. It is counterproductive to take 99% of all calcium supplements that are available. 99, excuse me, 500 milligrams of elemental calcium is the maximum you can take. So we researched and developed a product called Greens Plus Bone Builder. There are 19 minerals in it. The right amount of calcium in the right forms that get absorbed are in it, along with an equal amount of magnesium, manganese, 19 minerals that were really researched to be in the perfect combination. Now, does it work? It is assumed by modern day medicine that once a woman is over 65 and in menopause, she could, now I'd like to extend it, or any man, cannot actually build bone. So medication is given to stop us from losing bone. But Dr. Leticia Rao just published groundbreaking research in a medical journal, of which you can get a copy of from genuinehealth.com. She showed that every single person over the age of 65 taking Greens Plus Bone Builder built bone. First piece of research to show that in the world. Different amounts at different rates according to their health, their status. You need to do a little external exercise such as walking minimum for bone to build. But Greens Plus Bone Builder has been shown clinically with human beings to actually build bone in the most difficult age bracket that's possible to build bone. And we want to keep strong bones because strong bones mean it's our architectural strength. You want good shoulders, you want good movement, you want to be straight at 80, 90, or 100. It begins with our bones and it begins today. Greens Plus Bone Builder is clinically proven. Many other clinical studies, but I just wanted to mention that one that came out and it's relevant in 2014. What do I like or what should we do, be doing about educating people? to optimum good health. But first of all, I think it's fundamentally important that we all learn the rules of the road to how to live longer, healthier, happier, and if not necessarily longer years, better days, better years, not sick years, well years. My goal in educating people is that we have two choices. We can become a rapidly aging senior or we can become a wise elder. What did old cultures do? They allowed their seniors to take a prominent place in society. And their wisdom was given back and people appreciated their wisdom. We used to go to our grandma and grandpa and ask them what we should do. Today, what do we do with our seniors? We put them in seniors' homes. Nobody seeks their wisdom. We feed them jello. We feed them instant mashed potatoes. We don't even give them nutrition. So it's critically important, regardless of what your age is, and a lot of teenagers, when they hear me say this, really like this, make your goal to not only be well and live well, and be happy and reach out and help on Mother Earth, but also make your plan, don't just fall into becoming a rapidly aging senior. Decide to become a wise elder. Keep yourself healthy, healthy, functional, and bright so in your senior years you can give back some wisdom. What's critically important is I feel there are two sites that really give knowledge and awareness in which you can download videos or talks such as this or gain knowledge about wellness. When you look at the two websites, which is nationalnutrition.ca or genuinehealth.com, you'll be able to get the research I've been talking about. You'll be able to look at products that work well for any health kind of condition and gain the kind of knowledge we've been talking about so you can live a healthy, really functional, well life in which we feel that we can contribute every day, not only to our wellness, but making Mother Earth or our planet a better place to live on for everyone.
My grandmother started, one of my grandmothers started one of the first health food stores in North America in 1929 in Los Angeles. They called her Herbs, Nuts, Twigs, and Seeds. We and our family called her Nana Marie. She had a health food store, didn't have products in those days. She was an iridologist who looked at your eyes. She'd look at your tongue and look at your nails. Three internal organs that you can see externally. And then she grew, grew herbs, beets, carrots, and some greens. And she would make a personal juice for your personal condition. She taught us coming along the way that knowledge is power and knowledge is health. We have to understand that for most of us, we're out of equilibrium quite often. Nutritional equilibrium, stress equilibrium, we're in sleep debt. We might not have all the nutrients. And why do I say all the nutrients? If we look at iodine, I'm gonna to point to my thyroid gland. The thyroid gland sits right here. That's the thyroid gland. This little gland is responsible for our energy, our metabolism, our enthusiasm. It requires iodine to function. The amount of iodine it requires fits on the head of a pin. Think of that. A micro little amount that fits on the head of a pin. If you don't get that, it makes or breaks your day. That's how important little amounts of micronutrients are. If you don't know that, you might not go out of your way to study which foods have a lot of iodine in them. You might miss the iodine. You might miss your energy, so you start to have more coffee. Your mood goes down, so you might start to even use a, a, a mood medication or an antidepressant. But it may, might just come back to the fact that you're not getting one little micronutrient, iodine. The whole story of National Nutrition is, is a, a one success story that I think we should all know about and that I'm very personally proud about and that I'm just so happy to be here. Darren himself, who started in 2010, the present uh, location for National Nutrition, just won an award, a very, very prestigious award. He won Retailer of the Year. And if you think of all the outlets that are responsible for selling supplements, for selling foods, whole food stores, natural food stores, health food stores, they come under many names, it was chosen as the number one retailer. And then one of their people also won the Inside Sales Award, very prestigious for the person that's reaching out, giving the best information, offering the best service. So here you have a company that's not only very prestigious in the awards that it's won, but it's commitment. And I think Darren stands for that commitment. I'm very proud to be here because this is a progressive national company that has international customers and they're servicing the globe. They're local, thinking globally with great success. Great variety of products, great prices. I mean, everybody's a winner. Well, I think National Nutrition is doing a great job. First of all, Darren, who started the present um, operation that's in Aurelia, Ontario in 2010, I think owes a lot of his success because his parents had a health food store in Barrie, Ontario. So he learned that we need to serve the public. We need to make them healthier, brighter, wiser, give them better opportunity. What I call survival advantage, not only to deal with today, but tomorrow. What he has done is taken the idea and has gone international with it. He's made it easy for you to go on your computer to access and look at a wide range of products. So the availability is enormous. The price is really great and probably within 24 to 48 hours, whatever you've ordered sitting at your house. So I think National Nutrition has made the ability to purchase, receive and use supplements that much easier. obvious thing that strikes me is the happiness level, is the willingness to be here. You don't have a sense that people are here working, you have a sense that people are here contributing. They're reaching out to the public. So I've been very impressed from everyone I've met here, just how authentic they are, how happy they are, how I would say skilled they are at understanding the supplements and explaining them and their willingness. For instance, there are natural paths on staff. So if you really need a specific question answered, they're the professionals that can do that. So it's the quality of the people, the ability for them to reach out and their happiness. I mean, what a lovely place to be. That's, uh, that was my general feeling from the moment I walked in here.